Okay, so now we're going to look at how to make a box plot. A box plot is a visual representation of the data using quartiles and outliers if there are any. More specifically, a box plot is the visual representation of our five number summary. So the steps to drawing a box plot is after you've determined the five number summary, you're going to start by determining the upper and lower fences. Then you're going to draw a number line that is longer than the range of the data set. And you're going to insert vertical lines at Q1, the median, and Q3, and then enclose those vertical lines in a box. Then the next step, this is an optional step, you will temporarily label the upper and lower fences with a bracket. Any data values less than the lower fence or greater than the upper fence are our outliers and we mark those on the box plot with an asterisk or with a star. And then finally, we're gonna draw a line from Q1 to the smallest data value that is larger than the lower fence. And we're gonna draw a line from Q3 to the largest data value that is smaller than the upper fence. These lines that we draw from Q1 and Q3 are called whiskers. And so sometimes you'll hear box plots referred to as box and whisker plots. So we're going to look at an example. Um, in this example, we're looking at the number of televisions that were sold by an employee at an electronics store each month for one calendar year. So I've gone ahead and already found the five number summary for this box plot, just to save us a little bit of time right now in this video. So using this, I'm going to go ahead and calculate the upper and lower fences. And to do that, the first thing I need to find is that IQR. So remember that IQR is Q3 minus Q1. So looking at what I have written down here, Q3 is 23.5 and Q1 is 16.5, which gives us an IQR of, I believe, six, nope, seven. This is why I double checked it, seven. So now using that IQR of 7, I'm going to go ahead and find my lower fence, which is Q1, 16.5, minus 1.5 times the IQR of 7. And remember, you want to do 1.5 times 7 first, then you can do 16.5 minus that result. So I get a lower fence of 6, and then my upper fence is Q3, which we said was 23.5 plus 1.5 times the IQR of 7. And again, make sure you do the multiplication first. So we get an upper fence of 34. So I'm going to go ahead and look at my data set and see if I identify any outliers right away. So my lower fence is six, but my minimum is 13, so I don't have any outliers there. Nothing is smaller than six. My upper fence is 34, and my max is 79. So that's definitely gonna be an outlier. 79 is a data value that's larger than the upper fence. So I'm gonna go ahead and circle 79, and then I'm just gonna scan, I'm gonna redo that circle. I'm gonna try and get it so that the number doesn't move. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and scan the data, the remaining data, and just see if I have any other numbers that are bigger than 34, because that was our upper fence, and I do not. So 79 is going to be the only outlier. So when we get to that step in our box plot, we're going to label 79 with an asterisk or with a star. So now I'm going to go ahead and go down and start on that box plot. So I've already gone ahead and I drew my number line. And I made sure that the tick marks on this number line are evenly spaced and that it starts and ends at numbers that include all of my data. So my minimum was 13, so I started at 10. The maximum was 79, so I went up to 80. And then I put little tick marks in between each of those 10 to identify where like 15, 25 are going to be just to make it a little easier for me to do the rest of this box plot. Okay. So now I'm going to go ahead and insert vertical lines at Q1, 
the median and Q3. So Q1 was 16.5. So I'm going to find where approximately 16.5 would be. And above the number line, I'm just going to draw a vertical line here. And then the median, let's go up and look at what the median is. The median I found was 18.5 for this data set. So I'm going to approximate where 18.5 would be, and that's going to be pretty close to that 16.5. And then finally, we're going to mark Q3, which we said was 23.5, or we found to be 23.5. We didn't just say it was 23.5. Oops, I don't like where that line was. Let's try that again. There we go. So there's my line for Q1, my line for the median, and my line for Q3. So now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to connect Q1 to Q3 so that now it looks like the median is in the middle-ish of a box formed by Q1 and Q3. So that's the second step of a box plot. So the first step was finding the upper and lower fences. Second step is creating this number line and the box. So now step three said to temporarily mark where the upper and lower fences are. So my lower fence, I'm not actually going to worry about him because the lower fence is smaller than my minimum was. So I don't have any issues there as far as outliers. However, our upper fence, we already saw that we are going to have an outlier to take into account in regards to the upper fence. So I'm going to go ahead and label the upper fence. And it's just an approximation again. Okay, I'm going to do it with this highlighter. I'm going to see if I can make that a little bit thinner, actually. Can I make you thinner? I can. Let's do a little bit thinner. There we go. So our upper fence was at about 34. So there he is marked. And now I'm going to go ahead and label my outlier. So using our upper fence of 34, we identified that we have an outlier in the value 79. So I'm going to go ahead and take, come back down to my number line. I'm going to identify where approximately 79 would be, and I'm going to put a star there. That shows that that data value of 79 is an outlier. Some box plots will do just like a little dot or sometimes even an open circle, but typically you're going to see the asterisk symbol for the box plot. Okay. All right, so now the last step to the box plot, this step can get a little bit confusing. So we wanna go ahead and take a line. I'm gonna go back to what it says. We're gonna draw a line from Q1 to the smallest data value that is larger than the lower fence. So let's look at this first. So I want to take the smallest data value that is bigger than the lower fence. So my lower fence was six, my smallest data value is 13, so I'm gonna go ahead and mark 13 on my box plot. And that would be about here-ish, and I'm going to draw that as a vertical line, but I'm going to make that vertical line a bit smaller than I did for the other values. And now I'm going to connect this line to the Q1 line, just like that. So that is one of my whispers. So now on the other side, it says draw a line from Q3 to the largest data value that is smaller than the upper fence. So our upper fence was 34. Our maximum was 79, and we've already labeled the maximum with the asterisk. So when I draw this whisker, let me come back down here. When I draw this whisker coming off of Q3, I do not want to go all the way to my maximum. And the important thing to remember about these whiskers, and the reason why we temporarily labeled this lower fence, or this upper fence, I'm sorry, is because when you draw this whisker, if you cross 
your fence bracket on either side, upper or lower fence, if you ever are doing your whisker and you go past your upper fence, you have made a mistake. Any number that is on the other side of that temporary bracket, the one that I've drawn in the highlighter, that should be labeled with an asterisk because it is an outlier. We don't want to go past that bracket. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back and I'm going to look at my original data right here. And I'm going to say, okay, if this number 79 that I circled was not in the data set, if that month did not get recorded for whatever reason, what would have been the largest data value? So I look at my data and I see that the largest data value, if 79 was not there, would have actually been 29. So that is where I'm going to draw this whisker to. So I'm going to say, okay, 79 is an outlier he's already taken care of. So go back to the data set. If that outlier or outliers, if you have more than one outlier, if those weren't in the data, what would the maximum data value have been? And in this case, it would have been a 29. So I'm going to come down and just like I did for Q1 to my minimum, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to find where 29 would be, which I say would be about there-ish, maybe a little bit further away from the 30, maybe about there. And I'm going to draw a line from Q3 to that value. Now that is not the maximum. The maximum is 79, way over here. This is my maximum. However, we had to label the maximum as an outlier because he is an outlier. So instead, we kind of use like a little placeholder value so that we can create this last whisker. So then the last thing that we can do with a box plot is we can go ahead and annotate it. So annotating a box plot means you go ahead and you label each of the values that are part of the five number summary. So we don't want to label any data value that is not in the five number summary. So the data value 29 that we used to create that second whisker, we're not going to label him. We're not going to label the bracket that we drew for the upper fence. In fact, we can go ahead at this point and erase that guy because he's not officially part of the box plot. He's just there as a reference for us so that we make sure that we don't draw that whisker too far. Okay, and then you can also, sometimes you'll see box plots or you could if you'd like, they'll put the actual data value here. So we have 13, 16.5, 18.5, 23.5, and 79. You don't always have annotated box plots, but you do always have something that looks like this. And that is how you draw a box plot.